Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Thursday, February 6th, 2020, and I am your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaken Analytics. You can find me on Twitter at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaken Analytics. Head over to ChakenAnalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email where I get a lot of the content for this show, as well as give you daily stock ideas to consider, and it hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities finished higher in Wednesday's trading with the S&P 500 closing at a new record high on the heels of a strong ADP payrolls report. Energy and financials led to the upside, while REITs were the only sector lower on the day. Treasuries were weaker with the curve steepening. The dollar was stronger on the major crosses. Gold finished up 50 basis points. WTI crude uh, had a nice rebound yesterday, settled up 2.3% after closing below $50 a barrel on Tuesday. And as we get to the desk this morning, futures are pointing to a higher open, up about 30 basis points to get us going on a Thursday morning. Asian markets were solidly higher overnight, with Japan, Hong Kong, and Korea all up over 2%, while China gained more than 1.5%. European markets are gaining as well. Treasuries are stronger. Dollar is flat against the euro and the yen. Gold up 40 basis points. And WTI crude adding on a bit, up uh, about 40 basis points as well uh, as we roll into Thursday morning. So nice rebound continuing for the S&P 500. Take a look at this here. We have actually have had three gaps in a row, right? Gaps higher in a row on the open, right, to get us to a closing high. Support is still in the range between 3200 and 3250 which held nicely on the coronavirus-induced pullback. Resistance near 3,300 is being tested now. Now, we are slightly above it. We've been calling 3,300, 3,330 a resistance zone, and we're, we're, we're testing it. We'll see if we can continue to push through here today. The RSI is holding in bullish ranges, and the one thing that we are going to start to hear about uh, from people who want to take an overly bearish view or a bearish view in general is the fact that the new high yesterday was met with a lower high for now for the RSI, right? So should we roll over from here? and pull back to test support, people will highlight this negative divergence. I'm aware of it. I'm paying attention to it. But for now, right, I'm going to defer to the price trend, the fact that support held, the fact that momentum couldn't uh, get out of bullish ranges on the pullback, and also the fact that shaken money flow remains bullish. So the indicators continue to line up with price for now from a trend and momentum standpoint. I am aware of the divergences, and you will see them if you look at Pretty much anything that was making a new high yesterday, there's likely a divergence because the speed of this new high, right, against something that looks back over 14 days, obviously is going to create a divergence. We're going to keep an eye on it, see if it develops into anything else. But for now, we continue to stay the course. Bullish stocks and leading areas of the market when they are oversold with bullish money flow. Taking a look at our market in a minute now. Stocks gap higher for a third consecutive day. Breath metrics improve. With the index this week, global stocks rebounded from key support. Mega cap outperformance intensifies as stocks move higher. Really, a lot of the heavy lifting uh, being done by the largest of the large caps, the mega cap stocks. We'll take a look at that theme a little bit later on in the show. And as I said, futures do point to a slightly higher open here today. Now, taking a look at the major indices from a power bar perspective, the Dow added 1.67%, eight bulls to seven bears there. So that remained roughly flat. S&P 500 up 1.14. Power bar strengthens 147 to 62 bulls to bears on that on that group. Uh, NASDAQ was an underperformer yesterday. Only up 33 basis points, 36 to five bulls to bears. But small caps were an outperform. It's kind of interesting as we see yields move higher, small caps outperform. That was the trend towards the tail end uh, of last year. 553 to 256 bulls to bears there. Bond tick. Bonds tick lower, sending yields higher. Energy, um, finally something good to say about energy, right? One day does not a trend make. But energy did have a strong rally yesterday, up 3.76%. But check out that power bar ratio. Two bulls for only 12 bears there. According to the Chagin Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks are bullish. Major markets across the board are mixed. Hitting our stock of the day now, Taylor Morrison Homes. TMHC is the ticker symbol there. Close at 2732. Up 2.63% yesterday, so some nice outperformance uh, following an earnings report that beat expectations. You see here they reported yesterday, reported a dollar six against an estimate of a dollar. Power gauge rating is very bullish due to very attractive financial metrics, very strong earnings performance, very strong price volume activity, and positive expert activity. So 20 factors, five in each of these four categories, 
roll out to give us that very bullish rating for a stock that's in a strong trend above the rising long-term trend line. And in a strong industry group, household durables, in particular the home builders, uh, have been strong of late. And what I'm seeing here is something interesting. It's revert. You know, so we have a, a bit of a potential personality change going on. This stock was a big leader, and we liked it throughout much of 2019, right? And then it started to roll over, began to underperform. Rating turned neutral, right? Ratings turned bullish again. Relative strength continuing to improve as the new year gets underway, and now we are a slight outperformer. Interestingly, the overbought, oversold indicator is moving higher after failing to reach an oversold position. So that tells me that there's some strength behind this trend, right? Bullish money flow, stock uh, having a positive response to earnings. I think this TMHC looks compelling as a potential long idea, right? Normally, I like to wait for an oversold condition, right? but we want to adapt and adjust. And the fact that that indicator can begin to move higher without becoming oversold, it tells me there's momentum, similar to what happened back in September, right? Indicator pulled back and then began to move higher, setting the stage for a strong move from $24 to $28. Could a similar dynamic be at play here? Yeah, potentially. I think this one looks interesting. If you have a solid process for managing risk, I think you want to take a look at Taylor Morrison on the long side of the portfolio. Turning to our tracker now, the sector tracker, the movement of the major groups over the last five days discretionary remaining at the top of the list. And interestingly, home builders fall within that discretionary complex. Materials uh, continuing to see a bit of a reprieve, but the group is still bearish by our work. Financials uh, hanging in as rates have started to tick higher a, a bit again. We're going to see a lot of volatility around the financials if rates remain in this range that they've been in for the past few months. If you look at the 10-year yield, been trading between 1.5 and 2% for the past few months. So that back and forth there, obviously going to have an impact on the financials, also going to have an impact on the bond proxy REITs and utilities, which you can see have moved towards the bottom of the list as rates have backed up over the past couple of days. Technology remains a leader as well, and we do like to see that. Middle of the road, healthcare, staples, industrials, energy utes, REITs, also positive over the last five days. The only group that's lower is Calm Services. And now we've had some uh, some names that have come under pressure of late, right? Facebook and Google uh, in particular, big names within that group that may be weighing on the relative strength here in the near term. But it's the only group that's lower over the past five days. So we've had this strong three-day rally. And we're seeing a good level of participation. Uh, it is Thursday. It's when we look at market breath. So we will take a look uh, at uh, some of the breath metrics a little bit later on in the show. But first, our industry in focus, right? We've been talking about healthcare a bit. It's been an area of the market that we've warmed to. We looked at equipment recently. Now let's look at services. Over the past six months, healthcare services has underperformed the S&P 500 by 2.81%. However, that power bar ratio is very strong. 20 bullish or very bullish stocks for five bearish or very bearish stocks. Currently ranked number six of 21 subsectors and moved up two slots over the past week. Some of the names that are indicative of that group all with very bullish ratings, Humana, HUM, Centene, Corp, CNC, and Cigna, CI, right? All with very bullish shaken power gauge ratings. And let's take a look at one of those names today. Centene, CNC, very bullish rating, strong trend, strong industry group, right? Healthcare providers. That's why we're talking about it. Uh, what I see here is the rating turns bullish in October. Stock begins to outperform in November and continues to outperform. Money flow solid above the rising long-term trend line. And we have an oversold condition. Centene actually triggered two of our buy signals today, money flow buy signal and relative strength buy signal, and has rallied. Now, what's interesting is, those of you who get our notes, if you are a subscriber or if you've signed up for that 14-day trial, this was Mark Chaikin's bullish stock of the week in his note uh, to our clients on a Sunday afternoon. That note comes out every Sunday, gets you, gets you set for the week. And Mark identified Centene as a bullish stock. And I still think the setup looks compelling here. I think odds favor a continuation higher, a break to new highs here uh, above the level that we saw just a few weeks ago. Centene looks interesting to me as a bullish idea. Let's look at what's trending now. Yesterday's S&P 500 movers and shakers, Biogen, uh, favorable ruling in a court case sends that stock higher by 17%. Coty up 14.5% following their earnings announcement. UNM up nearly, uh, up a little over nine and a quarter percent following their earnings report. Capri CPRI earnings sent that stock higher 8.3%. And Concho rallying with that uh, big spot, pike, spike rather in the, uh, the energy complex yesterday. Loser side of the board, Ford's earnings take a nine and a half percent out of that stock. Revenue miss at Seagate. Hits it for 7%. Take two, uh, announced an executive departure. 
uh, 4.86% to the bad side. EPS and Outlook way on clack yesterday, 4.21%. ServiceNow didn't see anything really company specific to drive that stock lower uh, by nearly 4% on the day. Let's dive into uh, market breadth. And we've had a nice rebound here in the market breadth metrics that we track, right? Starting at the top of the chart, the percentage of stocks in the S&P 500 currently above their 200-day moving average is rebounded. Uh, back above the breakout level, remember last week we were talking about a slight breakdown. Now, we maintained a position that said a healthy majority of stocks were still in uh, long-term uptrends, right? 60% is the mark that we watch here. We're back towards 80% now, right? So from a long-term perspective, a healthy majority of stocks still remain uh, in uptrends, and we've regained the breakout level, right? We don't really get start getting concerned here uh, until this metric starts to break below 50. Now, what about the more intermediate term? Well, the percentage of stocks in the S&P 500 currently trading above their 50-day moving averages is rebounded as well, uh, back up to 68%. So a healthy majority of stocks uh, trading above their intermediate term uh, measures of trend, if you will. Um, so that's a, a nice rebound to see there. Uh, likewise, we don't show it here, but uh, even on a short-term time frame, right, the percentage of stocks trading above the respective 20-day moving averages also rebounded from 44% last week to 65% this week. So across time frames, we have what I like to call a healthy majority of stocks in uptrends, right, based on this metric, right? So that's breadth confirmation to the price strength that we've seen. We haven't seen the kinds of breakdowns in this metric that would lead us to believe that this uptrend is is ending. Obviously, we watch for it and write about it every week, but we're just not seeing it yet. It's not there. Uh, even look at the advanced decline line at the bottom of this chart, right? Ticking to new highs yesterday with the S&P 500 closing at a new high yesterday. So we have breath confirmation across the board uh, that the trend remains in place and it remains in place across time frames, right? So if you're looking for a reason to be bearish, I don't think breath uh, is the reason to do so. Now, what about uh, global markets? Right, we like to pay attention to global markets, right, as for their impact on equities as an asset class. Taking a look at the iShares MSCI Acqui XUS ETF, so basically global markets outside of the U.S. Right, coronavirus induces a pullback similar to what we saw in the U.S. The pullback tested a support zone similar to what we saw in the U.S., and we've subsequently rallied higher, similar to what we're seeing in the U.S., we're above the 200-day moving average. And what's interesting to me is that on this pullback, RSI could not become oversold, right? Never hit an oversold level as it did down here, right, in the past. So that tells me that there still is some momentum behind this move higher. Uh, what we'd like to see now is a continuation higher on the RSI into bullish ranges. But similar to what we looked at at the S&P 500, right, the speed of this move over the past three days uh, has caused a negative divergence here. So like I said, you're going to see it on a lot of charts uh, that you look at. Now, when thinking about where to overweight your equity exposure, I, th I still think it makes sense to be overweight equities in the U.S., right? Taking a look at the bottom of the chart there, you can see the uh, ACWX relative to the SPY uh, continuing to trend lower after breaking support. So if you're thinking about where you want to allocate your equity assets, I think you want to favor the U.S., understand, you know, wanting to run a globally diversified portfolio, but I think the bulk of your stock exposure should be in the U.S. as long as this trend line is heading in the southwardly direction. Finally, mega caps doing the heavy lifting. Here's MGC, the Vanguard mega cap ETF. Bullish ETF rating, 77 bulls, 35 bears, steady uptrend, pull back to the 50-day moving average, and then a rally to new highs. Above the 200-day moving average as the RSI holds bullish ranges. Right, so similar setup to what we saw in the S&P 500, but check out the relative. Right, after a breakout in November, we're continuing to work higher relative to the S&P 500. So even amongst the largest cap stocks or the large cap stocks in the S&P 500, it's the mega caps that are outperforming and that continues to be the case. So again, when you're thinking about where you wanna look for ideas, that's an area of the market uh, where I would be looking for ideas. So again, I mentioned the 14-day trial. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash test drive to check it out. <music>